But first tonight, the new owners of the Paw Sox make their formal pitch for a new waterfront stadium in Providence. It's a plan that's been talked about now since February when the Red Sox AAA affiliate was officially sold. The proposed stadium would include state-owned land that was opened up by the relocation of Route 195, and Rhode Island taxpayers would be asked to foot part of the bill. Now this afternoon, the team's ownership group presented their proposal to the 195 Redevelopment District Commission, which is in charge of finding the right developers for the sought-after land. Not everyone's on board with the plan, though, which was evidenced by dozens of protesters demonstrating against the proposed move outside of today's hearing. But Boston Red Sox owner Larry Lucchino, who's also part of the new Paw Sox ownership group, says a Providence Stadium would help jumpstart Rhode Island's economy. Eyewitness News reporter Shante Land sat down with Lucchino earlier today and has that side of the story. But first, let's go to Eyewitness News reporter Perry Russell with developing news on the Paw Sox owner's pitch to the state. Well, this meeting started about an hour ago. People are inside listening to the Paw Sox first formal proposal of what this ballpark in Providence would look like as well as how it would operate and how much it would cost. Inside of this meeting, it was standing room, standing room only. People were actually standing down the hallway just to try and get an ear's distance of what this proposal would look like. Now, the presentation focused on four different parts. The architect's highlights, construction costs, utility modifications, and the parking and traffic study. The entire plan takes up about nine and a half acres of land, five and a half of those acres would be the park. Now, there would be three entrances, points for fans that would be behind home plate, right field, and left field, all designated to take fans coming from those different directions of the city. Now, they're talking about it being a multi-use capability field. They say that the field could also be used for NCAA regulated football, soccer, and lacrosse. And one of the biggest questions surrounding this project, other than money, has been parking. Our assessment focused on the evening, weekday games. Uh, at full capacity for the stadium, which is a you know 10,000 seats, um, the assessment uh, studied approximately 20 intersections, 20 key intersections throughout the Providence area. Uh, what the assessment found was that of the uh, intersections studied, there'd be no uh, significant degradation in any of the levels of service for any of the the intersections studied. And that man who you just heard from, he says that within a 10 minute walk of where the field would be, there are thousands of parking spaces that are already there that are not being used. Now, Perry, aside from parking, we've heard a lot of concern about traffic. How did they come to the conclusions about parking and traffic impact? Well, Shannon, what they looked at is they looked at games during the week. Games during the week primarily started about 7 o'clock at night. Let's say that rush hour traffic is from 4, 5, and 6. That's still an hour window of when the game would actually start. And they say the game would last about three hours, so that puts us at 10 o'clock at night when these cars would finally go home. So they say the way traffic is right now, it wouldn't be any different than it would be if the ballpark actually went down in Providence. All right, thank you very much, Perry. Sox pitch. Today, the team's new owners presented their official proposal for a Providence ballpark. They outlined their plans for the state agency that owns the land freed up by the 195 relocation project. Now, a move that they say will provide a much-needed boost to Rhode Island's economy. However, not everyone is a fan of this plan. Dozens of protesters showed up to today's meeting to demonstrate outside against the idea. We have in-depth coverage for you tonight. Eyewitness News reporter Shante Lance has reaction from the governor that's new at 6. But first, the meeting just wrapped up in Providence. Let's go to Perry Russum, who's there, live in the capital city. Well, that meeting finished up just about 10 minutes ago, and new tonight, we're hearing from the architect on the six-mile move from Pawtucket to Providence. NCAA football, soccer, and lacrosse, just a handful of the other capabilities that the Paw Sox say their stadium in Providence could be used for. Have a whole variety of seating types. The park's architect, Chuck Izzo, says it could be a premier destination in all of baseball. I think it's a unique opportunity that you don't come across very often in terms of baseball um, or other sports. It's the opportunity to be more than a ballpark. They want to build a kids' wiffle ball field behind the outfield fence and say a farmer's market could go next to it. The plans also show a gas main and storm sewer would have to be moved. We have conceptual plans for the relocation of both of, both of those utilities. When looking at parking and traffic, they study 20 intersections around the park and how it would look during a weeknight game at full capacity. There'd be no uh, significant degradation in any of the levels of service for any of the, the intersections studied. 
And coming up at 6.30 on Fox Providence, Seam owner Jim Skeffington faced some hard questions from the 195 Commission. We'll tell you what he was asked and how he answered. Live in Providence with the Mobile Newsroom, Perry Russell, my Witness News.